let us see the students. Next topic is resolution of a vector in three dimensions. Last time we have seen the resolution of a vector in two dimensions. That means x axis and y axis. In two dimensions, there are only two vector components. From the head of the vector, when you draw one perpendicular line on x axis, you will get x component. When you draw another perpendicular line from the head of the vector on y axis, you will get another component a y. But now here, the vector is in three dimensions. That means the vector is lying in three dimensional plane. So which plane will you see as a three dimensional plane? I will show you one instrument, very simple instrument. You can see here, this is a three dimensional plane. Along this direction, x axis. Along this direction, y axis. And this is a line coming outside, perpendicular to the plane of the ball, is z axis. x axis, y axis. That's why this plane is said to be x, y. You can understand it like this one. I put this kind of thing. So this is x, y. Because this is x axis, this one is y axis. Then, as you, this is y axis, this is z axis. So if I hold this kind of thermocol like this, okay, this is y z plane. Then, this is x axis, this is z axis. So between them, this kind of the plane is said to be what the x z plane. And this is the origin of three dimension coordinate system. Now from this origin, if I take the vector is supposed to be lying like this one. So this red pen is vector A. This is x axis, this is y axis, so this is lying in x y plane. If the pen is hold is going to be like this one. This is y axis, this is z axis, then the pen or vector is said to be in y z plane. If the plane in the pen is lying like this one. This is x axis, this is z axis. Then the vector is said to be lying in x z plane. But if it is lying in this three dimensional plane, then the vector should be like this one. It is neither in x y plane nor in y z plane nor in x z plane, but it is in the combination of these three planes. So it is said to be three dimensional plane. Then this is the head of a vector. This is the tail of a vector. Like this one, you can see the diagram. So in the diagram, I am going to be showing this kind of the vector A is like this one. So this is the vector A. And from the head of this vector, if you draw first A1 perpendicular line, like this one, then it cuts at a point Q on the x z plane. You can like this one. So this is a perpendicular from the head, like this one. So it is, so this point Q is said to be x z plane. From the point Q, you draw a one more perpendicular line to the x axis. It is like this one, Q M. So it cuts at a point M on the x axis. You measure the distance from O to M. Put the arrow at a point M. Then vector O M is said to be A x i, is a x component, like this one. Vector O A is said to be A X I as X component of the vector. From the point Q, you draw another perpendicular line on the Z axis. It cuts at a point N. You can see from the point Q, this is another perpendicular line. It cuts at a point N on the Z axis. You measure the distance from O to N. You put an L at a point N. Then this is the component along z axis, that's why you can see it is a z k, that because k is unit vector in the direction of z. So this is a z k, o vector o n is a z component. Then this line p q, so here from the head point p, you draw a one more perpendicular to the y axis. So this is a perpendicular line q r. 
sorry, P R is a perpendicular line to the y axis. And this is the R point to measure the distance from O to R. So this distance from O to R is A Y because of in y direction unit factor g multiplied by unit factor g. So vector O R is said to be what the y point. Is that clear? So in this way you can have the resolution of a one vector in three dimensions. One component along x axis ax. Another component along y axis ay. Third component along z axis az. And now by using the geometry of the figure, you can say this vector a is equal to sum of these three components. How is it possible? It is possible like this one. Here the point q was there. Here, if I join this point Q with this one, so this red pair is working as what? OQ. So what is OQ? OQ is equal to, you can see that it is a vector sum of vector ON and vector ON by method of algorithm. So this is the vector ON, this is the vector ON. So this vector OQ is represented as the sum of the two components, AXI and AZI. From the point Q, this is the vector PQ, like this one. The vector QP is there, and this vector QP is equivalent to vector OR. That's why this QP is representing as A1. So this is the first vector OQ, this is second vector QP, and some of these two vectors, because this is the head from which this is the point, this is the vector QP is there. We have vector OQ plus vector QP will be equal to vector OP. And vector OP is vector A. So you can write vector OQ plus vector QP equal to vector A. But vector OQ was AXI plus AZP. And vector QP is AYP. So you will get in this way the sum of these three components equal to the vector A and it is resolution of the vector. And this all things I have written just now you see. How is it possible? So now resolution of a vector in three dimensions. The same procedure can be used to resolve general vector A into three components. One along x-axis, another along y-axis and third along z-axis in three dimensions. So here you can see from the diagram vector OP equal to vector A. Then from the head of the Vector A, we are drawing a one line perpendicular to the xz plane. Then from the point Q, we draw a one perpendicular line on x-axis, another perpendicular line on z-axis. So you can see here, as shown in figure, first we draw a line PQ from the head of the vector A perpendicular to xz plane. Then from the point Q, we draw the two perpendicular lines from the point Q. One on the x-axis, it is QI. Another on the z-axis, it is QI. So we get the two vector, one from vector O to N as AXI, another vector from O to N as AZ. And some of these two vectors, vector OM plus vector OM, according to this method of algorithm, is the resultant vector diagonal, vector OQ. Vector OQ equal to vector OM plus vector M Q will be equal to vector OM plus vector OM. The vector OM you can write like this one. Plus it is the vector OM because this vector M Q or you can say QM is equivalent to vector OM. So vector OM plus vector OM will be equal to what AXI plus B. It is vector AQ OQ equal to AXI plus B. Now we do a one line PR from the head of the vector A, which is perpendicular to y-axis. So we get vector OR equivalent to vector QP equal to AYT. It's a third component. Finally, the resultant vector OP. So this resultant vector OP equal to sum of these two vectors according to method of triangle. Vector OQ plus vector QP. Vector OQ plus vector QP. But vector OQ is replaced by AXI plus AZ and vector QP is replaced by AYT and thus according to here we know the associated law holds for the vector addition so just releasing this vector vector A equal to AXI plus AYT plus AZT 
or these vectors sometimes can also be written as in a bracket. Three scalar components, three scalar values, Ex, Ey, Ez. And the magnitude of this vector A is given by, as we know, in two dimension. There is a vector A equal to Ax plus Ey. Then what is the magnitude? Magnitude of such vector equal to square root of the sum of the squares of its components. The same fact is directly you can apply. So magnitude of this vector in three dimension is equal to square root of the sum of the squares of its x component, y component, and z component. That is magnitude vector A equal to square root of ax square plus ey square plus ez square. Now, same argument we can also apply for determining the position vector of a point which is lying in three dimensions. So if coordinates of any one of the point in three dimensions are x, y, z, for a point lying in three dimensions, its x coordinate is x, y coordinate is y, z coordinate is z, then its position vector is given by vector r equal to x into unit vector i plus y into unit vector g plus z into unit vector e. Or this vector r can also be written as in bracket x, y, z. As here we have written ax, y, z. Similarly, position vector r can be written as in bracket x, comma y, comma z. And magnitude of this position vector equal to square root of x square plus y square plus z square. Sometimes this position vector can also be written as rxi plus ryj plus rz. And its magnitude is square root of rx square plus ry square plus rz square. Now, the question is there. How will you determine the value of Ax, Ey, Ez? So we know that's a method. If a given vector is making a somewhat angle with a given direction, direction that may be x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, then in that particular direction, that component equal to the magnitude vector into cosine of the angle made by that vector with that particular direction. So that's concept we have used. So here you can see that, again I will show you the same three dimensional plane diagram. So let I see, this is x axis, this is y axis, this is z axis, and this is the vector A. This vector A is making how much angle with x axis. So this angle is supposed to be equal to alpha as shown in that. So vector A is making an angle alpha with x axis. That's why along the x direction, you will get the component vector OM and this OM as Ax and this Ax equal to what? Magnitude multiplied by cosine of the angle made by this vector with this direction. So you can see that here if alpha, beta and gamma, I think similarly there is a second angle so this alpha is there, that's why you can say Ax will be equal to A cos. Similarly, this vector A with direction of y axis is supposed to be making an angle beta. So along y direction, you will get the y component and this Ay equal to magnitude of this vector into cos of the angle. So you will get Ay will be equal to A cos. At the same time, this vector A with respect to this z direction makes an angle is supposed to be equal to this angle is equal to gamma. So you can see that this entire angle is gamma. This much angle is beta. So here around z direction, you will get the component az equal to magnitude of this vector that is a into cosine of this angle, this angle is gamma. So you can write to this az equal to a cos gamma. So thus if alpha, beta and gamma are the angles between the pairs of the lines like vector a and x angle between e and x axis is alpha, angle between vector a and y axis is beta, angle between vector a and z axis is gamma, respectively then, and this remember, these three angles are not coplanar. that means they are not lying in the same plane, they are in different planes. Then we get a x equal to a cos alpha, a y equal to a cos beta, and a z equal to a cos gamma is there. So these three components, Ax, Ey, and Ez are how much so that you can determine by using this concept O. Now let us
this is the next method of addition of vectors as well as subtraction of vectors by algebraic method or by analytical method. Actually, we have studied earlier the method of addition of vectors by graphical method. But this graphical method is restricted only to determine the resultant of two or three vectors. Similarly, method of parallelogram is also be useful to determine the resultant vector of two vectors only. But if more than two vectors, more than three vectors, more than four vectors are there, then this method of addition of vectors by graphical method or by method of parallelogram becoming complicated as well as becoming tedious, as well as it becoming less accurate. That's why we have to use another method for addition of factors as well as subtraction of factors. And it is known as what? Analytical method or algebraic method. So what we have to do in this method? Very simple method is there. In this method, the given vectors should be compulsory in terms of its vector components. And then you have to add the corresponding components in the addition of vectors and in subtraction of vectors you have to subtract the corresponding components you will get the resultant vector or you will get the addition or subtraction of vectors how let us try so we have seen that the given vector can be resolved in virtually perpendicular components we have seen in an earlier topic vector a in two dimension resolved in two components ax and ay ax and ay are mutually perpendicular because ax is in x direction, ay is in y direction, x axis and y axis are perpendicular, so these components are perpendicular. If you are getting the vector components in three dimensions, then these three components, axi, ayg, and azt, are also mutually perpendicular to each other. So we have resolved. So we have seen that the given vectors can be resolved in mutually perpendicular components, so vectors can be easily added or subtracted by combining their respective components. Suppose a vector A and vector B are given in x, y plane. They are having the components ax, ay and bx, by. So this vector can be written as vector A equal to axi plus ayj and vector B equal to bxi plus byj. Then you want to find the addition of these two vectors. And if I see the resultant vector of the addition of these two vectors is supposed to be equal to vector R. Then this vector R equal to vector sum of A and B, that is vector A plus vector B. You replace vector A by the components AXI plus AY. Vector B is written as BXI plus BY. Now for the addition, you just add X into X component, Y into Y components. So what will be AXI plus BXI? I will be common. So in bracket AX plus BX outside bracket N. Similarly, AYJ plus BYJ. J is common to in bracket EY plus BY outside the bracket G. So vector R equal to AXI plus B, sorry, AX plus BX outside bracket I plus in bracket EY plus BY outside bracket G because we know the vector O base, the commutative law and associative law. So directly you can write. So thus vector R can be written as RXI plus RY. Well, what is RX? So this RX is equivalent to AX plus B. And this Ry is equivalent to Ay plus Bi. So where Rx is Ax plus Bx and Ry is Ay plus Bi. So this vector R equal to Rxi plus Ryg is known as the resultant vector of the two vectors for their addition. Thus each component of resultant vector R, that is Rx, is equivalent to Ax plus Bx. Ry is equivalent to Ay plus Bi. So this each component of resulting vector R is equal to the sum of the corresponding components of vector A and vector B. In three dimensions, if the vector like A and B are given, Axi plus B, Ayg plus Azt, vector B equal to Bxi plus Byg plus Bzt. And now, if you want to find the resultant vector, then resultant vector vector R equal to sum of these two vectors, vector A plus vector B. Equal to directly, you can write resultant vector R equal to Rxi plus Ryj plus Rj. Because the vector A has, is in three dimensions, the resultant vector R should also be in three dimensions. It's one component, first component Rxi, second component Ryj, and third component Rj. But what will be the value of Rx, Ry and Rj? 
where Rx is equivalent to the sum of the two components, x components. Ry is equivalent to the sum of y components. And Rz is equivalent to the sum of zz components. So Rx is ax plus bx, Ry is ay plus by, and Rz is ez plus by. This method can be extended for any number of vectors. Not only two vectors, there are three vectors, four vectors, five vectors, six vectors. We should the number of vectors. But if you want to find the resultant vector, then simply you have to follow the sum of the xx components, sum of yy components, sum of zx components of all given vectors. If subtraction is there, then do the subtraction. So if C1 example can be extended for any number of vectors. So subtraction and addition combination is both there. So if there are three vectors, vector A, vector B, vector C, I. What vector A in three dimension? Exi plus Eyg plus Ezt. Vector B is Bxi plus Eyg plus Ezt. Vector C is Cxi plus Cyg plus Ezt. And if you want to find the resultant vector equal to sum of two vectors and subtraction of third vector. Vector A plus vector B minus vector C is supposed to be the resultant vector. Then this resultant vector, vector T, has three components Tx, Ty, and Tz. What are the value of Tx? So Tx is equal to what? Sum of Ax and Bx and subtraction of Cx. So you can write Tx equal to Ax plus Bx minus Cx. Similarly, Ty equal to Ey plus By minus Cy. And similarly, Tz equal to Az plus Bz minus Cx. So thus, Tx is equivalent to Ax plus Bx minus Cx. Ty is equivalent to Ay plus By minus Cy. And Tz is equivalent to Az plus Bz minus Cz. And then we have to see the next example of your textbook. Here, you remember this one, I will solve it later on. Find the magnitude and direction of the resultant of the two vectors, vector A and vector B. A system may find an in terms of their magnitudes. And the resultant vector R, in terms of magnitude of vector A and vector B k form A, as well as the angle theta between the two vectors k form A. The magnitude we find an I and direction we find an I. Kiska magnitude, resultant vector R. Kish form A in terms of magnitude of vector A and vector B as well as the direction between the vector A, direction, angle theta between the vector and vector B. Then you have to find the direction of resultant vector. And direction of resultant vector also in terms of the magnitude of vector A and vector B and in terms of the angle theta between the two given vectors A and B. 